Hey everybody, I'm Carl from Apt, and in this video I'll be giving you a closer look at the QN85D series 4K Neo QLED TV from Samsung. I'm going to talk about the differences between this one and last year's QN85C series, as well as who might this model be best for, so stick around. Let's start off by taking a look at the design. It's got an extremely slim bezel. The monitor is shallow and would look great mounted on the wall. And the pedestal is a single stand mounted in the middle. And if I'm being honest, it is not the easiest stand we've ever assembled. So if you need help setting it up, be sure to check out our unboxing video where we give you step-by-step -step directions on how to do that process. As far as sizes go, the QN85D is available in 55, which is what we have here, 65, 75, and 85 inches. So it's a decent variety as long as you don't need a small screen. Moving around to the back, we've got all of the connections. This gets four HDMI connections that all support next-gen gaming features like 4K at 120 Hertz, auto low latency mode, and variable refresh rates through FreeSync Premium Pro. And number three is where you're gonna find your enhanced audio return channel. You also get two USB type A's, an ethernet connection, optical audio out, X-Link, and an antenna connection with ATSC and clear QAM tuners for over the air broadcasts. For wireless connections, you get Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 5.2 built into this one. Taking a quick look at the remote, it is the same solar powered one that you're going to get with most of the other Samsung TVs for 2024. You get some shortcut buttons underneath all of your standard controls, uh, like your volume and your channel selection. And there's also a little solar panel on the back to help you charge it up, plus a USB type C connection on the bottom in case you need to charge it faster. As far as the operating system goes, this gets the updated version of the Samsung Tizen OS that features the new Daily Plus menu where you can watch training videos for working out, you can access telehealth visits for yourself and even your pet, and it's also where you can find options to use the TV as a remote PC or Mac, so it's got a lot of functionality built in there. Then you've got ambient mode where you can set up a screensaver so that your TV isn't just a blank rectangle when you're not using it. You can use your own pictures if you want to, but there's also several that you can choose from that come built into the TV. And you can even set them up to show you different things like the time or the weather, so some good features built into that also. Moving on, we've got the Game Hub option where you can do some cloud-based gaming, meaning you can stream games to play without needing a physical console. All you need is a controller. It's great for people who enjoy gaming but either don't want to hook up a separate console or maybe you just don't have the space for one. It's a really great alternative. And then you've got the slightly redesigned home screen, which is now called a home screen. When you're on the home screen, you'll see three options at the top. There's For You, which is curated content that Samsung thinks that you will enjoy watching or playing. There's Live, which is going to show you what's currently on through the Samsung TV Plus app or over the air if you have an antenna hooked up. And finally, Apps, which is where you can find a full list of the apps that you have downloaded onto the TV, and it's also where you can search for new apps to download. Now let's take a look at what kind of audio you get with the Samsung QN85D. Every size in this series gets a 2.2 channel setup with a total of 40 watts of power, which is actually a 20 watt and 0.2 channel downgrade from last year's 85C series. Even still, it does sound pretty decent for a stock TV speaker system, but like we typically say, you'd really be doing yourself a favor hooking this up to an external audio system, whether that's a full Atmos surround system or even just a simple sound bar. If you need help finding the right one for your home theater, you can always give our home theater experts a call here at the store for help. They can also tell you about any promotions that we have running that maybe we can't advertise online, so make sure you take advantage of that. As far as audio features go, this series has Adaptive Sound Plus that uses AI to make adjustments to the audio based on what you're watching, and it also supports Q-Symphony to help enhance the audio when you pair the TV up with a compatible Samsung soundbar. In addition, this also has dual audio support through Bluetooth, so you can hook up two pairs of compatible wireless headphones at a time, which can come in really handy if maybe you and your spouse want to watch a movie while the kids are sleeping in the next room or upstairs and you're just not disturbing them that way. And since we're talking about headphones, it's also worth mentioning that the 85D does support 360 audio for compatible headphones as well, which is a cool kind of spatial audio format. 
Now let's check out the picture. I'm assuming that's why most of you are watching this video. To start off, the 55 inch model that we have here is using a 120 hertz VA type panel with mini LED backlighting. Here's a little picture we took of the pixel structure in case you're interested in seeing what that looks like kind of under a microscope. This also gets Samsung's new NQ4 AI Gen 2 processor, which does help enhance the colors and HDR processing over last year's QN85C. Still no Dolby Vision support, but it does support HDR10+, which can be found on lots of streaming platforms like Prime Video, Paramount+, and YouTube, as well as on lots of your favorite Blu-ray discs. And HDR content does look fantastic here with contrast that produces really deep blacks and really bright whites. We also found the local dimming to do a nice job. There is some light bloom, which is not unexpected since this is a mini LED TV, but it's not out of control. It's most noticeable when you're sitting off center. And on the topic of sitting off center, here's a look at the screen from the sides. It does lose some quality, as you can see, as you move off center. Again, it's a VA panel, so that's to be expected, but it gets Samsung's wide viewing angle technology, which at least does help retain some of the color and sharpness. Again, nothing that's uncommon or unexpected for an LED backlit TV. Then there's the motion handling, which is great with that 120 hertz panel, so all your sports and your action movies and anything fast moving are gonna look nice and natural. As far as getting the best picture out of the QN85D, our recommendation is first off to turn off all the energy saving settings and put the TV to filmmaker mode. Now, that may not be your favorite preset, so we do recommend also checking out the others to see which one you might like the best, just in case. The other way you can do it, which is a little more involved but can provide better results, is to download the SmartThings app onto your smartphone and run the basic calibration program. This is going to use a series of colors and things to sort of calibrate the TV's picture through your phone. For gaming, this one has all the features you'd want. Like I mentioned earlier, there's support for 4K at 120 hertz, variable refresh rates with that FreeSync Premium Pro, auto low latency, and Samsung's Game Bar menu that lets you cater the picture to the genre of the game you're playing. And there's a dynamic black equalizer to help brighten up those dark areas of your games and kind of help make it easier to see any enemies trying to sneak up on you or hide from you. Finally, let's take a look at how this handles light reflections. As you can see, this isn't the TV's strongest point, and it's really not supposed to be. There isn't any anti-reflection technology built into this series. You'd need to go up to the QN90D for that. The picture can get very bright though, so that's definitely gonna help, but it's not necessarily the best model to have in a room with lots of windows. However, if you do most of your TV watching at night or you have a way of controlling the amount of light in the room, you'll be just fine. This is really a great TV. So the QN85D gets an updated picture processor, but it loses some audio power to last year's QN85C. It's probably not worth upgrading if you already own the 85C, but it's gonna be a great option for someone looking for a TV with fantastic colors that also has the more precise dimming control that many LEDs offer. It's bright enough to use in a well-lit room, but will really look amazing in dimmer areas. If you still have questions on the QN85D or any of the TVs we carry here at APT, please be sure to give our experts a call. We're always happy to help. Thanks as always for watching and we'll see you in the next one.